body to conform and line up with the word of God. And I went back day and I did it night and I did it day and did it day and did it night without stop. And one morning I walked in and the feet had turned back around. He said, what do you mean? What did you do wrong? He said, why did it take a two years for me to keep saying? He said, dummy. He said, it doesn't matter how long it takes. You got the feet to turn back. See, that's what's wrong with so many people. You got a time clock on God. Turn that clock off and begin to speak the word. Well, how long should I speak it till the feet turn back? Till they turn all the way back around? Keep speaking the word until it's a change. I dare to tap three people and say to the feet turn back. You ain't got no help up in here. Speak into the Hobasha. Yeah, no, 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 Keep talking the word of God. God's word is like a sledgehammer. God's word is a sword. God's word is a power. Touch somebody and say, speak it. Speak the word in your house. Speak the word over your finances. Speak the word over your body. Speak the word over your loved one. Speak the word over your future. Speak the word over your ministry. Speak the word. Well, I don't feel like it. That's why you don't never have nothing happen for you. Because you don't realize this is a fight of faith. I've been fighting the devil. This ain't a fight with the devil. The devil's already been defeated. You are in the fight of faith. You ain't fighting the devil. You fighting to get rid of this enemy. And don't be conformed to this world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That you can prove the good, the perfect, acceptable will of God. That means God's will for you is good, acceptable, and perfect. It's your job to renew your mind so God can prove it to you. He's working in you and through you to do of His good pleasure. Whether you want it, whether you want to believe it or not, you are God's partner whether you want to be or not. And you might as well get your little wagon out and get dust off your saddle and saddle up because you got to ride, Tonto. Come on, somebody. You're going to have to get yourself in gear and stop making excuses for yourself and say, God, I'm going to take the word for what it says. In the name of Jesus. What's what I got right here? I dare you to speak over your eyes, over your teeth. Come on. Speak over the body part. That's the thing. Command that tumor to dry up and die. In the name of Jesus. God, when God made you, He didn't make you with no tumor. That's not God's will. He didn't make you with no cancer. That's not God's will. Well, I don't get sickness. I need money. All oh, the young lions suffer lack. But those that put their trust in God never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging for bread. These are the conclusions you have to come to. It's very difficult just to say, I'm going to believe God and on the trip home. On the journey back, the demons start howling. X-rays start coming back. Doctor reports, oh, we, the doctor reports are coming back, and we found out there's a black spot on your lungs. And you, you read the report all the way while you were on the trip, all the way while that man was traveling back overnight to get back to his son. He came there prepared to commandeer Jesus, pack him up, and take him with him on a journey. Not a fantastic one. <laughs> to take Jesus on a journey. And the Lord was like, <clears throat> I ain't got time. Your son is well. Go your way. You don't need to package me in person, in the flesh. Because see, you in the flesh, you think I got to be there to make it happen. Let me tell you where real faith lies. Real faith is when you don't see no Jesus. You ain't had no visitation. You ain't had no dream. Angels ain't came to you. You ain't heard an audible voice. Real faith is when the Word says it. And that's enough. That is the highest form of faith. And whether you know it or not, 
I know some of y'all are begging God to appear to you and give you all kind of supernatural dreams, and you would, you would really believe if he did it. God would be more pleased if you take the witness of John, Matthew, Mark, and believe it and read it. Now, it's not going to happen overnight. You got to read it. You got to hear it continuously. You got to marinate it. That girl said, she didn't understand nothing. You know, I hear people come to my church, Pastor me. I don't really understand nothing you're talking about. <coughs> I had one. I had, I, you ought to see the letters I get. I just was listening because the podcast was free. <laughs> and, you know, it was, I could feel the anointment. <coughs> I could feel the anointings on the tape when it was playing. And I didn't understand nothing you were talking about DNA and the mysteries of God and all the epinosis and all. I didn't, what in the world were you talking about? I was like, I just knew it was anointings on it, though. And I felt better when I listened to it. I was like, this letter is starting off interesting. I'm keep reading. But I kept listening to it. And about in four months in, I can't listen to nothing else now. I want to, buy, I, I want to hear about who I am in Christ and who Jesus is and my, my, my new gene, my DNA that I have in Christ. And my imagination. I just started downloading all your series. I said, did you send an offering? <laughs> you don't value nothing you ain't willing to pay for it. Let me say that. Make it free because I don't want people to have an excuse. And she said, suddenly like a light bulb. I didn't heard this at least five or ten times. After listening, it's like a light went off. And it's like everything you had said I had been listening to that I didn't understand, I now get it. But at first it was hard to listen to. She said, why that, why that is? No, she didn't say it like that. She said, she said, why is that? And I wrote her back. I said, because you've been listening to stuff that ain't got nothing to do with the Bible. You've been listening to nice messages and sermons and love God and love people and love the community and unity and love and, and just love everybody and bless everybody and be nice to everybody. And you've been listening to you get your stuff back and it's your time and haters is your elevators and all this other foolishness you've been listening to. You know, I heard that stuff. Yeah, haters is your elevators. <laughs> and the name is, you know, they do all that stuff. But ain't no power in that. You know where power is? In Jesus. I may not be right about everything, but I preach Jesus. I preach him big, bad, bold, live, active, and working and doing the same yesterday, today, and forever. Give me five, somebody. That's what's going to change your situation. Not three steps to prosperity. Not seven steps to blessing. One step. Jesus stepping into your house. One step. That's what's going to change things. When you run into him, it don't matter who else you run into. Hallelujah, Jesus. Bow your heads. Thank you, Father. I thank you for creative miracles. I just heard the Holy Ghost say, I thank you for creative miracles. See, except you be like a child. See, little children let their imagination run wild. And little children don't hold the past. They let go of yesterday and running into the future. Except you be like a child. You won't enter into the heavenly dimensions. Creative miracles supernatural you know god can create livers and lungs new thyroid that's just, that's what i hear him i've seen people who didn't have eardrums god create eardrums in their head i've seen people start growing parts of their body back after prayer just start growing out i've seen legs just straighten out seven inches shorter just shoot right out at the name of Jesus, they start growing. Hallelujah, Jesus. I've seen so many miracles in 27 years of preaching the gospel all over this country and all over this world. I've seen people fall into the power and levitate. Suspended in air and everybody in the church can see by the power of the Holy Ghost. Many miracles. See, but you got to take the boundaries off of Jesus. You have to take the handcuffs off of him. Stop trying to tell him what he can and what he can't. Stop. 
He taught all the word. There wasn't no miracle before about him putting mud in somebody's eyes and they become an eyeball. That had never been done before. God wants to do miracles that ain't never been done before. Well, if it's not in the Bible, then I don't believe in it. Everything that Jesus did is not in the Bible. The Bible tells you that. See, when you close your mind to religious thinking and get all religious and start thinking this way, you think you got God figured out. You've already lost. That's what the Pharisees did. I'm not saying goofy stuff. I'm not saying going out here and start commanding trucks to stop while you walk. I'm not talking about anything stupid. I'm talking about taking his word. What did he say? What did he say? The first time you read him say something, you sit there and say, Boy, that's, that's hard to swallow. Lord, can you do that at the end of the day? Will you... I know you can, but Lord, this, this, is a, this looks so hard. I'm in pain. It ain't going to look right until you keep looking. You got to keep looking. You got to keep beholding that word. That's why God told Moses, let this book, don't let it depart your mouth, but speak. Look at it, behold it, day and night, and then you'll make your way prosper, and you have some good success. You got to, what's more important than making a ritual? of meditating the word. You know the word meditate means roll over and over again. That means you read through John and you see that story. You read it once, you read it through again. You read it through again. You read it one more time. You go down slow. Then you read it out loud. Then you read it to yourself. Read it out loud. Read it to yourself. Read it again and read it again and read it again. And pray in the Holy Ghost if you got the Holy Ghost while you're reading it. And pray and worship God and just begin to glory God, glorify God for the miracle. As if you were right there watching the miracle and you saw it and you started cheering Jesus. Be right there. Become a live participant in the audience and then see that story until suddenly you're there standing on the wayside watching him tell that man and you was there when they gave the testimony start living the word start hearing it start hearing it here faith come by here you do that for two months and watch when you turn your faith loose on the mountain what's going to happen you do that for a month and then talk to that tumor yeah I hope you had a good rest while you've been in here I hope you've enjoyed your stay in my body. But today is the day of your eviction. I've already seen you be moved. So in the name of Jesus, get out of my body. I curse you. Die. Leave. Hallelujah. See, you want to speak too quick. You want to start rebuking and binding. And you ain't fed the spirit, man. You got to take the images from his word and bathe them in your mind. Why? Why? Because you spent 16 years, 20 years, 40 years, I don't know how old you are, being indoctrinated with images that say, God don't do that no more. That don't happen no more. It's not like that. This, those days are over. You've been fed that, and Jesus did not teach you that. You didn't hear that from God. You heard that from some theologian, some preacher that don't have the Holy Ghost. That's who you heard that from. Somebody trying to sound deep and they're not deep. There ain't no deep message. Jesus is the deep message. Hallelujah, Jesus. Father in name. Lord, touch our minds today. Touch our hearts today.